The North Northeast Community Development Initiatives Oversight Committee meeting number 25. It is March 11th, 2020. It is the middle of the week, if you can believe it already. Hey, I'm Dr. Stephen Holt, and I kind of feel like a radio guy right now. I kind of got that. Hey, welcome in tonight as we get ready to do what we're about to do. <laughs> I'm glad you are here and looking forward to what we are going to do. I think everybody had a chance already to sign in. I see you eating the good grub and uh, welcome those who are catching this by way of or will catch it by way of cable uh, television. Thank you for joining us mm -hmm. as well. We've got a pretty full agenda tonight and many things that we need to cover. And so we are going to get going. And we will begin with roll call and ask you to identify yourself as we go around the room. I'm Joanna Fugates with Prosper Portland. Dorsey Johnson. Jennifer Huang. Maurice Roming. Gwen Thompson. Janisha Hoyla Smith. Quentin Blanton. Do we have anybody on the phone line tonight? No. Nobody yet? No. Um, Ebony will not be making it tonight. She let us know that she would not make the meeting. And we have not heard from a few others of our committee, but we have enough to keep going. So I will kick it to our co-chair, Quentin, to um, handle meeting minutes and meeting minute approval. Well, give them a moment to read the minutes, review them if anybody has any questions. So we'll give them a couple of minutes to do that. So. And your um, preceding co-chairs are right here to help coach along, so. Does anyone need more time? Yes.
Does anybody need more time? Any discussion? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, there was discussion by myself. I wanted to position the fact that the committee was being led to vote based on some initiatives that I had taken to say that irrespective of whether you voted yes or no, that really we would be focusing on detailing our concerns and that would amount to essentially a whole vote for us. And those notes are not in the minutes. I wanted to see if Diana or someone could address if those are missing notes, if that was intentional to keep the minutes not to 12 pages and maybe to six pages, but um, I just wanted uh, to have an understanding of why those are missing. Can you, can you say it again? What do you feel like it's missing? Um, conversation that we had related to the fact that I had taken the initiative to present to our committee an idea that irrespective of whether we voted yes or no, that truthfully what would be documented in our letter was a list of the major concerns, the supports, et cetera. Got it. Uh, I know that we uh, did some editing just to reduce from not being 12 pages, and there were some parts on the action that, that we removed because it was done. So I believe that was there in terms of receiving the letter from you with um, the additional terms and the concerns. So I think that may be why it's not there. Um, so my request would be if we could ha add those back to the minutes. Yes. Okay, both items. Thanks. Any more discussion? Do we have a motion to approve? I move that we approve the minutes based on the addition of conversation that was deleted. I second that. It has been moved and seconded, and I don't think I see the red, yellow, green. Did we not get oh. those passed? We're going to go back to the rubber service. So what we will do for our name tent, oh, here they're coming. For the sake of this one, um, uh, if you are in favor, just turn up your yeah, name tent. Perfect. Thank you very much. Passed 100%. <coughs> Our next item is the Process of Portland update. We have an introduction to make tonight, and I'll let you do it. We want to introduce Nancy Wilson. Uh, she's our new um, manager with the um, development team. So if you want to introduce yourself, just tell a little bit about your background and where you're coming from. Hi, Welcome, good, Nancy. Hi, good night, everyone. Um, my name is Nancy Wilson, and I am the new development manager at Prosper Portland. I'm coming to you all the way from Nashville, Tennessee, and from also from Howard University and Morgan State University in Maryland and Washington, D.C. I'm happy to make your acquaintance. Uh, please know that I am available and ready to help in uh, any questions, in any development areas, and also in accessing information from my staff. I'd be very, very happy to help you with the process of uh, the issues and the development that you know North Northeast is going through. I am always ready and willing and able and open to hear what you have to say and also to help you. Um, please feel free to come and meet me at the end of the, um, the, the program this evening and uh, introduce yourself and let me know how I can be of assistance to you. I've been working in affordable housing and community development for over 20 plus years and uh, I know how important it is to have the community be involved. So again, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. Nancy, could you talk a little bit about your orientation to 
this particular group, the North Northeast Community Development Initiatives, and why they need to know who you are? Is that a tough question? <laughs> Okay, so I um, I work with, as I said, I'm working on the development end of uh, of our agency, and I am actually in charge of the North Northeast project. Uh, anything else? That means that I'm, you know, the buck stops with me. I'm responsible. Um, I am going to ensure that within our process, we're open. We are available that the equity um, requirements that the agency holds up to its equity requirements not just for the agency or for you but also for um, for this purpose of personal and professional integrity know that I am an advocate for you to make sure that your voice is heard and that um, I hold everyone accountable for the actions moving forward. Thank you very much. I think it's noteworthy. Not only is she uh, responsible with North Northeast CDI, she's also responsible with the Williams and Russell Project. So there's some sense of continuity. Shanisha. Microphone, please. Is it, is it green? Okay. There we go. Okay, my question to you, since you are new to Portland, Oregon, right, is um, are you familiar with what's necessary? Because what's going on in the South is a lot different than what's going on here. Mm -hmm. And so how have you caught up to what's going on and how you can be able to create a successful um, plan for Oregon? Since, like, again, I've been in the South for a long time, so I do understand the difference between property and access there in comparison to here. So I just want to know if you're willing to get with us so we can catch you up on how you can be of better service to this area, because I, like I said, South is a lot different than this area. Well, I'm sure that you would recognize uh, when you get to know me that I am an absolute student. I have studied even before coming here, and I have experience in, even though I'm coming from the South, I'm actually very much grounded in um, the Washington DC Baltimore area and I've seen I one I've, I know your history I have read about it I've spoken to people I have seen the the the, the I have seen gentrification seen and observed gentrification if this is you know the umbrella that you um, you're referencing I've seen it in Washington DC, in Baltimore, I know the struggles and I know the context of where the neighborhood is coming from. I observe it, I've lived through it, I've seen it, I've uh, studied it. And that's why I think um, I'm open to hearing your personal stories, your struggles, what you want to get out of this process. So um, it's, it's not, while it is very important, it's also not unique to, um, to, to Portland. What is unique to Portland is the history of the state, of the, of the policies, etc. I'm open to learning, but I'm also taking into context all the experiences that I've also had to, to help guide, to craft, and to support the process of getting to a successful outcome. So we're gonna be looking at case studies, we're going to be hearing what you all have to say and how to help uh, a collaborative outcome for everyone. Thank you. Gwen. It's red, but it's on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so just as you um, are bringing lots of talent to our city and we appreciate having you here, um, I think I can speak for all of us to say if there is any set of skills or talents that we have, please utilize us as well. I definitely know that with every, with every piece of fabric or cloth, I know we have some shared experiences, 
but every thread, every individual, every community brings a valuable input and resource. So that's why I'm saying I'm open to meet with you, to listen to you, to l hear what you want as far as your the outcomes and to work with you and the agency that I'm also representing to make sure that we have a collaborative approach. We have a win-win outcome. And while I would say it's difficult at times to have everyone um, be in a place of total satisfaction if we are moving together as one entity and was one, un one unified um, body. I think we will have a sense of integration and a sense of um, shared, shared uh, prosperity if we you know, listen, get the input, and then move forward together. Any other comments or questions? Good question. <coughs> yes. Thank and you. if you would identify yourself too, good, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Michael Harper, board member. And Nancy, welcome. Thank you. So you, you've been in Portland for how many years now? I've been here for um, going into a couple of months. Okay. And, and my concern is that are you setting up a number of meetings to meet new people in the city? Because when you take a responsibility that you don't know, except for a couple of months, the people here that we represent may not represent you and where we're headed. So can you tell me uh, when you're going to begin your process of having meetings so people can get a chance to meet you and tell you what we already have in motion? I, I am I'm excellent at networking, mm -hmm. that's, that's for sure. Um, I have been meeting with lots of, uh, uh, a few, mm -hmm. um, uh, city personnel, I've met with people from the neighborhood as well. Um, I am tasked with with several. I meet, I've met with I've met with people who are business owners who are concerned about um, you know our interactions and our business ventures, um, especially when it comes to the black community and black businesses. I've met with people from the Housing Bureau. I have met with um, uh, Williams and Russell's net, um, uh, working groups, uh, project working groups, and um, just people who are involved with the entire process. I've had several meetings actually. Thank you. I'm, I'm really interested in your <clears throat> in your networking and uh, being available and accessible. Uh, a lot of times when people take charge on things that they don't know about, they get in trouble. And we are in a unique environment where we have behind you a number of constituents that have, have really taken at heart not just three months, but 10, 20, 30, and 40 years in trying to get our neighborhood back to where it should be. So I hope you're open. I did see to that. <laughs> not taking charge, but listening and understanding the direction that we like uh, the city to go in. And um, I know Dr. Hope was telling me, I don't know if he was a part of your hiring process. I was not. So I hope you use him as a, as a, as a guiding light or a springboard into our committee and my chairman here. Uh, is excited about having that first lunch with you also, co-chairs, and that would that would open things up uh, for us. So I really appreciate that. Well, thank you Very so much. much. I, I'm, I'm just going to reiterate that I am open, available, and ready, and I have been meeting with, with several people uh, prior to this meeting. So thank you, Mr. Harper. You're very welcome, and I look forward to our first uh, luncheon also. You're quite welcome. <laughs> Any 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 other questions? Um, I wanted to know, <clears throat> um, could you kind of give an overview of the um, history of Prosper Portland and its relation to the African American community, like <laughs> in the uh, um, in the particular area of like Russell and Williams, this property. Well, so I, I, I will uh, jump in on that one. I think that that's a little <laughs> off topic for our work here tonight, but worth having a conversation. It would be more of an offline conversation. This is more of a high level kind of introduction, but something we definitely can circle back around on. I would, I would say to you, uh, Quinton, that please 
I, I'm, I'm very open to meeting with you. I know this is not a, a test, <laughs> but um, it is more a sense of relationship building that you're asking for. I'm extremely good at that. Um, feel free. Um, feel free to make some time with me during or after working hours. I'm available. I'm here. Thank you. Maurice. Is it on? Okay. Yep. Uh, with the meetings that you have had, um, kind of what were the outcomes? What are you hearing? Well, I know it's it's been a very difficult history of um, it's been a very difficult history. It is painful. It is unjust. It is a sense of we have to get a voice in order to uh, get our mission heard and accomplished. The difficulty is how do you get that accomplished? And I think this is how the project working group and also the surveys, and while that does not give a, an end to um, wanting to get successful outcomes, it is just part of a process of being heard, of being involved, which you have shown by being here and being you know, a part of the, the community, and not just the community, but having your voice be heard. How do we work as partners? I think that is much more of a, um, a question. Your, the history is valid, your feelings are valid, but ultimately it's like, how do we get to where we want to go? How do we get your, your message, as well as your outcome, to the finish line with a successful um, with, with a successful, um, I don't want to use the word outcome again, but with a successful tangible product. And that is what we're in the process of carving out and working towards. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just, I, I'm gonna kind of ask for, uh, I'm going to ask for a moment. I'm going to ask this committee to come to this relationship with a sense of partnership. So I think listening kind of in both directions is really important to that partnership. There is a lot to learn. I have also spent the past month with Nancy, and she has an incredible background in architecture, project management, construction, which are all things that are going to be necessary to delivering on the community development initiative. So I think there's a lot of opportunity for exchange. And I'm also going to ask that the exchange happens with an underlying premise of partnership. Thank you very much. Yep. Nancy, didn't mean to put you on the hot spot. I wanted no. to just <laughs> introduce you to the group and give the group an opportunity just to say hello and welcome. That was the heartbeat behind it. And then uh, to move forward with then addressing the real issues that pertain to the work that's in front of us. So thank you very much for being willing to step up and uh, – uh, take on the work and roll up your sleeves. There's a lot of work to do in front of us. Thanks, everyone. I, I know that there is, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of mistrust in our community. But please know that I am willing to work with you and for you. And uh, again, I I don't have an office door per se, but I'm available. Please see me. Get my cell number. We can talk offline. Anytime I'm available to hear what you have to say and to help move your, um, your, your project and your objectives forward. Thank you. Thanks. Nancy. Appreciate it. Yes, um, please see me afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll leave that up for a moment. Diana. Future meeting dates. Was there anything you were going to say about that? Can we go back to the slide so we can leave there so that people can get a chance to mark it down? Thank you.
Hello, everybody. Hi. If you aren't able to capture that tonight, feel free to reach out to any of us and we can forward along Nancy's information as well. Um, I just wanted to take care of a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, we have sent out a calendar invite for our next meeting. Um, it's the next bi-monthly meeting, Wednesday, May 13th, 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, at this same location at Billy Webb Elks Lodge. Um, and then we also wanted to take a moment to discuss how our next meeting will fall in July. Um, the second Wednesday is July 8th, and so um, there's an understanding that there might not want the committee, the committee might not want to gather at that time or they might want to flex the date a little bit depending with, you know, summer vacations and all of that. Um, so Joanna will actually be sending a follow-up email to confirm the action that's going to be taken to set that date so we can get it settled as soon as possible. Um, and then I also wanted to say this is actually the last meeting that I'll be at in my internship supporting this project and I just wanted to say Thank you, and it's been an honor to observe you all, support you all, um, and I am absolutely in invested in this, and I really admire all of the work that you all have poured into it, and um, I'll continue to show up as a community member, um, but with the meetings logistics, um, my internship is coming to an end, so I just wanted to say thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Appreciate it. Did we want to deliberate around the July moment, July decision. Yes, Gwen. I'm hoping that Diana might speak to some of the work that we have coming up. My perspective is that we've spent a lot of time as a committee on the two issues that we voted on, and I'm personally eager to get on to the five goals of the North Northeast Action Plan. So Diana, maybe if you could give us some perspective on things that we could accomplish. Me, Joanna. <laughs> yeah, I think Joanna will take that one. Diana, I'm gonna I know, miss a lot you, to be sorry. Done. You're just on my mind right now. I can't believe you're leaving, you're sorry. Um, but yes, if, if the committee could have some perspective on what's ahead and why the July might, meeting might be useful, that would be great. Sure, um, I'm with you, I think the past few months have been very focused on the other two items, and it would be great. Um, it has been part of our conversation from our last co-chairs meeting uh, to get together and talk about the subcommittees and what we want to do. I think there are some important points, like um, Dorsey brought to my attention, and that's actually one of the, the next item that we added to the list here uh, really quick this, this evening before we started, which is, both hers and Jennifer's um, uh, uh, terms are coming to an end. We need to start discussing new members to the to the committee, and so we need to get together. Um, one of the issues is there are only two people on the subcommittee that is dedicated to new members. Um, so that's part of the question, like can we get more people so we can start talking about this? There are all the five goals that we would love to keep a discussion going and actually start talking about how are we getting those 24 millions that are left out of the door and invested into the community. I think the concern was more just uh, being the summer. Are people going to be available? Are we going to get everyone here to also be able to get that done? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't want to dominate this conversation, but I think just based on what you said and the fact that you guys have a limited amount of time, that just makes it more important that we meet as much as possible prior to you leaving. Um, specifically, what you're saying about Dorsey, her leading the subcommittee for new members, I think you're starting that process already. If you haven't already, you plan to. I think we're going to talk about it tonight. Are you going to talk about it tonight? Perfect. So I'm in favor of meeting. I'm available to meet as well. We have a, a committee member who joined us that I'd like, if you <clears throat> identify yourself for the record, please. Kara Stoudemire Phillips. Welcome. To tonight's meeting. Let's continue the discussion around the July meeting. What say you, committee? If you would turn your mic on, please. <laughs> no, it's for the record. It's being recorded, so they need to hear. Uh, perhaps because of the silence, it's best if we all individually go back and check our calendars and then come back and we can handle this offline. <laughs> 
And also that could be a question that we can ask at our next meeting in May, <coughs> right? So just for logistics, we try to schedule two before just because then we have the place and everything oh. reserved. Yeah, it's just. Do you want um, to? And it doesn't, wanna need, it doesn't need to be today. I would. I can definitely send an email by Friday. I just want to make sure that I get everyone's response. I just and that everyone's aware. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Satisfied? It looks like we are. Janisha, were you about to say something? Okay, excellent. We'll move then to the added item. Uh, on the agenda, which is subcommittee for new members. <laughs> okay, so as Joanna mentioned earlier, uh, Jennifer and myself, we will be leaving the committee, and so we'll need two more members. Um, we only have like a month for that process, mm -hmm. so we're hoping to have a subcommittee meeting sometime next week okay. so we can um, discuss um, how we're gonna move forward, whether um, regarding sending out applications. So right now, all we have on that committee is me and Chonisha, that's from the records that we have. So I have a, a paper around, so if anyone's interested in being on this committee, obviously with me leaving, we're gonna need more than just Chonisha. So if we can put your name on here, and then um, we'll reach out to you um, by Friday so we can have a date for next week. Could either of you talk a little bit about what that subcommittee role looks like? So we'll, um, we gather applications, we'll send out applications, we'll, um, we'll go over the application to see if it needs to be updated. Um, if that needs to be updated, we'll go back to Prosper and they'll make the updates. We'll figure out how we're going to um, distribute the um, applications. And then once we receive them, we will review them on our own, and then we'll have a subcommittee meeting, and we'll discuss it. We'll rate the actual um, the responses that we get, and then we pick new members. Thank you very much. Gwen. Our charter. Maurice, this question is to you. On our charter, how many members are we supposed to have total? Do you remember? We can, we can have up to I thought it was 12. I thought it was 12. Please, when you're responding or interacting, please make sure you're speaking to the mic. It is being recorded, so. Sorry. I know that we so have So I'd like to make a, a recommendation. First, but please. Yes, go ahead. I'd like to make a recommendation that we check in with all committee members to get an understanding of when they plan to leave or when their time is expiring so that we have up-to-date information on every member of the committee also that there are some committee members that I rarely see I think it's timely that we check in with those members that we do not see to maybe let them off the hook maybe they just need someone to ask them if they're too busy to do this and they can say yes um, and then also I would be curious to know um, for example, how many members you need on the new member selection committee? What do you think is a good number? Thank you. Maurice, and then back to Dorsey. And that my, mine's is more of a statement. I'm hoping that the committee members are rolling off, and thank you for being with us for so long, um, would write just a letter to the chair, the new chairs, um, to kind of let them know of your experience and so it's and hopefully that can be something that's just shared with the chairs and not with everybody else so that you can be open and honest about your experience so that it better informs them on how to proceed forward. Dorsey, did you want to respond to Gwen? Maurice, your name, Ted? Um, yeah, that was a good point. So I'll make sure that I call all the members to um, check their commitment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then how many people need to be on the subcommittee? Uh, at least four. Max. Oh, max is four? I okay. believe it's max four because my understanding is if you get five people of the committee together, it becomes a quorum. Absolutely. Depends on how, how large the committee is. And so yeah. just you can't do, uh, you can't have a number that tips beyond what would be equal. So, no. I thought that we had at least six members on the the committee, but maybe that's not true. You said up to four, four or five. 
We checked the, the old list of the committee for that specific one, and there were, I think, four or five, but like two or three of them are no longer here. Okay. Perfect. Michael. Thank you, Dr. Holt. I'd like to volunteer for that committee. Michael Harper. So there's some, a paper going around. If you can add your name on that list. <laughs> Um, Chonisha, if you still want to be on there, put your name on there, and then uh, we'll reach out to you guys. If, if there's more than five tonight, then I don't want to be on the list. <laughs> I'll tell you that it's not. Okay. Put your name at the top <laughs> Thank of you. the list. <laughs> and whenever you want, whenever you got a thought, just name 10 on the side and I got you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a little reminder. That's excellent. Yeah. Good stuff. Any other comment around subcommittee conversation? Are we ready for the next item? All right. Number four, updates on project working group uh, and housing projects, and now the I-5 project. I'll make a little comment about this. We have had conversation in regard to adding this item to be an ongoing item that at some point within uh, our uh, public meetings to then talk about how this particular work fits into a broader context of work and so that's the goal tonight. It's really just an update on what's happening. Um, as you can see, that there's, there's a 10-minute window there, and if it's perceived and or needed, there, there's a, a greater in-depth questioning or, or conversation that needs to happen, then it would become an agenda item specifically for that. But this is for updating uh, around what's going on. So to that extent, did we identify who was... I know my name is there, but uh, am I giving all the updates for that? I mean, it's because you are on all of the three. I am on all. <laughs> I am. That was the idea. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. So Project Working Group at this point has transitioned or is in the midst of transitioning uh, into what we're calling going from the cruise ship into speedboats. Uh, moving into smaller committees to take on specific areas of focus and responsibility. Uh, as the work from the community engagement process has completed, so the community engagement process was to hear from all community members through a variety of uh, opportunities, some small, some large, over a three-month period, uh, a report is forthcoming. It still has not been completed, but it will be forthcoming. Uh, the community members identified priority areas, and now subcommittees are being uh, crafted or have been crafted to support those priority areas and then move the work forward. And so the larger group will continue as it exists with monthly meetings, but the majority of the work is going to go to subcommittee work being supported by staff from the Portland Housing Bureau and from Prosper Portland to uh, provide the expertise that is needed while the subcommittee members then can react, interact, guide the process, and uh, inform it. There is going to be an RFI that is being released, and an RFI is a request for information. And the goal behind that is to communicate or uh, to let other community members and nonprofit institutions know, and if I miss anything, please, Leslie or Lisa, fill this in, uh, to invite those who have not historically had an opportunity to participate in development uh, who may want to participate in the development on the site but are themselves not developers. And so the RFI is being sent out to find out or to inquire and then uh, gauge interest uh, from that. And then that will inform the RFP, which will be drafted uh, very shortly. So the goal is to have an RFP, I think, out in July. Was that it? Responded by September. Okay. And move that work forward. So... Oh, I think I should also say that uh, we've had the conversation around the property being added into the URA. The vote happened today with uh, Prosper's board, and it was moved forward to be added into the URA. And then there was also a vote around maximum indebtedness or their determination moving that forward as well. And it both were moved forward. Yeah. Comments? Uh, Karis was there as well. And then Lisa, but... Yeah, okay. Janisha. 
Mike, Mike, Mike. When you're talking about moving the property back into the URA, are you talking about the property that was moved in 2003 that was out of the URA, which was moved over 8,000 people who had availability to have um, help? Or are you talking about the small amount that's over by the, um, the hospital district? Only? We're talking specifically about the Williamson Russell Project, what this group talked about and made a determination on. So that 1.7 acres. Okay. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think that's it for the project working group. Housing projects. Um, there uh, is tomorrow, and let me invite everyone to it, tomorrow night at um, New Song. Thank you. I'm about to call the names of the streets. Uh, at New Song Church in the community room, starting at 6 o'clock, a five-year celebration of the North Northeast Housing Strategies work. And you will get a very thorough update of um, all of the work that has happened in the community and the amount of families and uh, homes that have been impacted. It will be well worth your time. Uh, regarding rental units, the goal was 380. It is actually going to be 501. And in terms of ownership opportunities, the initial goal was 65. It's going to be over 100. Um, there are, I think, 798 uh, households that have benefited from uh, mitigation and displacement strategies. And so it is a pretty profound thing. It started with $20 million. is now over $90 million invested in North Northeast uh, housing. And um, you will find out about some land banking. Uh, it's a great opportunity to come and find out what's going on. So Maybe you said this. What time is it? 6 o'clock. Thank you. 6 to 8.30, New Song Church. Yes. You have to come to the mic. From the mic. From, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't even hear you. And if you would announce your name, ma'am. This is being recorded. I'm. It's like we keep... Um, everyone on this committee should have received an invitation and so if you did not respond and you're planning to come could you please send me an email so I can make sure you get onto the list thank, thank you. you thank you <laughs> appreciate it Leslie you might as well just sit on the front row exactly It'd be easier. <laughs> exactly any questions comments about that congratulations Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the group has done some great work, and that is volunteer work. It's been five years. It's been a significant lift. Um, and then the last is the I-5 corridor project. And the I-5 corridor is the Rose Quarter uh, expansion project that is set to begin. Uh, there's quite a bit of work that is going on with that. And so I think it's uh, something that that uh, should be brought to this space since so much of this work is overlapping from the community development initiatives work, the North Northeast housing work, the um, um, Williams and Russell work, and then uh, at some point, I think adding um, even um, an AVT, Albina Vision Trust update, so that we begin to think of this collective strategy and potentially um, how we lean in together. So that was the, the idea about it. Comments, questions, thoughts? Yes, Gwen. Would you please tell us more about the I-5 corridor expansion? I'd love to have you share any details that you have. And then I really like the idea of adding the Albina Vision project to um, a list that Joanne un undoubtedly keeps. A uh, potential presentation would be wonderful. I-5 corridor project was stalled initially. Um, the uh, initial rollout did not necessarily involve um, uh, community engagement strategy uh, along with it and or hired uh, consultants and or facilitators. It was being approached from a, uh, I think, a higher uh, level of, or level of directors, and it ran into clash. And so now this is a restart. And so they're bringing in a variety of approaches to stand up some groups, a community action committee, a uh, committee that's around workforce and workforce development, and then an executive steering committee. And Tri-Excellence has been hired as the 
um, lead consultant for the work. And it's still in its inception. Maurice. Who are the current entities that are involved in the I-5 project? From what standpoint? Agencies. What agencies are involved in the I-5? At this point, it, nothing has been done. It's all in the initial phases. So there's no who? agencies involved? Lisa Boff, the lead agencies, so the Oregon Department of Transportation is the lead agency. The lead liaison within the city is the Portland Bureau of Transportation. Um, and then there has been a strong amount of work within the mayor's office to coordinate between the north-northeast work that both um, the agencies of Prosper Portland and the Housing Bureau are doing because it sits within his, his portfolio together with the Bureau of Transportation to ensure that there's alignment between the goals that were set out in the North Northeast Neighborhood Housing Strategy, the North Northeast Community Development Initiative, and the conversations and negotiations that will happen with the Oregon Department of Transportation. But the lead agencies are the transportation agencies. And I imagine Prosper is also one of the agencies that are involved or hoping to be involved. No, right now, I mean, really, we uh, we don't we don't go to those meet we don't go to the transportation meetings because they're. Uh, Okay. Uh, they're traffic engineers talking about traffic engineering stuff. So we're, we're sorry, that was it. That's a really technical version of what happens. But where we are trying to be really intentional as a city is to be coordinated and think about it as a community development effort where there are transportation improvements that the Department of Transportation is looking at doing. Um, and acknowledging that, that there, is a, there is a similar history that the Department of Transportation has with what Prosper Portland and the city of Portland has had and the impact, the negative impact that we have had on the African American community and kind of sharing some of what we have learned through our community processes with ODOT as they think about doing engagement through their work. And how does it, or how does it align with the Albina vision? Do you want me to? You want me to take a? So, um, it does. So, the Albina Vision really is a fourth element. So, the Albina Vision Trust received a grant both from the City of Portland that Prosper is managing, as well as a grant from Metro, and they're starting to get underway community engagement. So, they've they have um, hired a community engagement firm, I believe, if not in the process of hiring a community engagement firm, and then they were they were going to identify their own process around looking at the Lower Albina area. The place that it interfaces is understanding what are some of the improvements that would come off of the I-5 project, like capping some of the freeway that would lend itself to more of a community development benefit. Thanks for that clarification. Yeah. And still being defined. Uh, I'm yeah, just, absolutely. Just curious, what community-based organizations are part of that? Is it like MISO and other places like that? Great question. Uh, in in which process? Sorry, just so in I'm any of the processes for um, um, uh, lead a organizations are they are they part of that? Or is it just a big transportation organizations and everything? But are there any small community based organizations involved with that decision making process as well? Sure. So I think one of the reasons we wanted to bring this to your attention is they haven't started their full community engagement process. They're just getting that underway. And that is kind of that is one of the functions that is happening is just identifying who's who who are community based groups that they're going to invite to the table. And, and the groups are being defined. So the groups that are going to be dealing with the um, uh, DMWESB. Dynamic, the groups that will be bringing community members, kind of grassroots together, and then some who will have a little different uh, challenge and or role. And, and in light of that, there is discussion around an invitation to have a member from the North Northeast CDI participate, a member from the North Northeast Housing Strategies participate, and a member from the Williams and Russell group participate at the executive steering committee level so at this point it's still in formation and then uh, uh, invitations will be going out so you have you have it already defined what the community based involvement was going to look like no the community action committee is what it's being called and that's all still being shaped up at this point 
Karis. I was just going to say, from what I know about the process, I, have a, I know someone that has applied to be a part of that committee and was just um, accepted to be on that committee. So it, it's in this, it's the same um, process as we've done for this committee and also with the Williams Russell, where you apply to be a part of the committee. Um, the information, I think I, I've got it several places. It was mailed to our home. It was I saw it via email. So there was a um, a robust. Um, process to get the information out to the community so that people could apply to be on that committee. Was my and they haven't even met yet. Here's was how are they getting that information out to the community? And you said, I think you've already mentioned. Yeah, email, I saw the flyers at churches, I saw the flyers at various um, community locations, um, door, like mailings to addresses within, I don't know what the, the um, zip codes were used to, to mail them out, but um, I saw it in at least five or six different places. And um, is it your committee that's also involved? In that? No, um, hi, I'm John. <laughs> I'm your navigator. This, this thing is, yeah, sexy. Yeah. That <laughs> <laughs> no, we actually got turned down from the committee, and from ODOT. Or was it ODOT fund? Mm -hmm. ODOT. And uh, we got this letter back from them that said, oh, we had a number of people that wanted to participate. Blah blah blah. But yet we are uh, the business association in the district. So why wouldn't we be a part of a so committee like that. So I'm curious as to what other people were invited on this committee and for what reason. So that's the issue that I'm looking at. So. Perfect. Great question. Maurice? I'll, I'll come back to you. You go first. Oh, You're no. Uh, just to piggyback off on that, is are the applications over then? Is that the yes, they okay. closed it. Yeah, the application okay. process is over. The person that I know that is on the committee was uh, selected for the committee because she lives right here. She's one of right. the only houses <laughs> that's still in this neighborhood. Yeah. There's only three houses on her block, and that's why she <coughs> selected. Well, we've just been a big lobbyer against the I-5 widening, so I'm just concerned that there's a lot of they're stacking that committee to a degree to get the progress in which they want. So we've been definitely le leaning into that as advocates in, op in opposition to the project. Thank you. Yeah. I'll come back to you in just a moment. Maurice. So one of the things I would ask is what is the, how is the process of selection? How is the process of, you know, because there are, I know that they create these committees and they create a committee that oversees the committee, then they create another committee that oversees the other committee. And so by the time it gets to the top, it could be uh, completely watered down. And so I wanna, I'm curious on what the process looks like. And also I'd be also equally as curious on what the rejection process looks like. So why wouldn't a, a individual or a group not be selected and have they given reason for the why? Excellent, hold on, I got it. Um, I think the way that, because uh, it sounds to me like it would be a great invitation to ODOT to come into the room and meet with the CDI. That's what I'm hearing. And so I think that would be a great invitation for a future uh, meeting. Again, we're not trying to get into the weeds. This is a higher overview. So I appreciate it. I appreciate John, thank you. Thank you. Yep, thank you. I appreciate it. We're not going to get into the weeds tonight. This was, again, a higher overview. So Gwen and then Quentin. Well, I'm willing not to get into the weeds if you can give me some assurances that you can get ODOT to come to the meeting. I think there's a great, a great responsiveness. There's a different approach. The effort is to be very responsive to the issues of the community. Again, trying to stand this thing back up, having introduced it the way that they did and run into the roadblocks. So it's a phone call to Brendan Finn and have a conversation with Brendan and Megan. And is we'll put forth the effort. Is it a weeds question to ask Mr. Washington what concerns we should be watching out for with the I, I think that's something we take offline. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We've got, we're on our agenda. We're past our time. So. You hit it on the head, sis. Yep. Thank you. Quentin. I wanted to ask him <clears throat> really quick. He said we oppose the expansion of the iPhone. Who are you? Can we, can we circle back on that? We're, I just again, wanted to say who he represented or who he was talking about when he said we. He said the the sole district business group. They're yeah, the, I didn't hear they're the I navigators. Was just asking for clarification. They're your Thank navigators. You. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to dig down too deep on it. It's it's kind of a bigger bigger picture. But we're the sole district business association, which represents a number of businesses along that I five quarter on the, where they're going to do the widening at. So there's a number of things and reasons. There's schools. There's a number of things over there. Just as a community organization, I mean, we just need to be aware and on top of what affects us in the community and be there and be a part of the process, that's all. Thank you very much. Okay. Excellent. 
All right, next item on the agenda. This is a North Northeast CDI quarterly report. Name tense, please. Thank you. Yeah, we invite you and Brooke. <laughs> so you guys should have two things in front of you. The, this one, that is a progress report, and then there's like a folded one that is kind of like a sh chart with everything. And just to clarify on this green one, the, um, the report in January 2017 to December 19, 2019, the numbers in parentheses are the difference between the last report and this one. And um, Sue and Brooke can kind of talk about the, the new uh, PIP grants and the new loans and all of that. Oh, one more thing. On the progress report on the back, I know that in the past you guys had demographics information. We were not able to find all the details for this meeting, so I'll bring it for next meeting. I'll redo this one. Great. Hi. Good evening. Uh, Needs to be read. Yeah. Needs to be read. Okay. Hi. Good evening. I'm Sue Lewis, and I'm a project manager at Prosper Portland, and I'm here with... I'm Brooke Mentire. I'm a loan officer uh, with Prosper Portland. Great. And um, I guess I should say I manage our grant programs. So I'm just going to talk about the change from June until December. Um, and uh, Diana, if you could switch to the... Uh, do you do you have this one up there? No, okay, great. Okay, so sorry about that. So you have the one that looks like this, a printout, and it shows in parentheses the change. And so of uh, the change for the um, small scale property improvements, there were eight. And I wanted to let you know that the uh, shift of that is there's 50% of those were uh, owner occupied. And uh, meaning that the business, the property owner also owns a business in that property. And then 50% were um, property owners that leases out to tenants. And of those um, eight in the, the change with, in goal one, then 37% um, thir were African, 25% was African American, and 37% uh, were Asian. And they represented the food industry, accommodations, child care, laundry, garment services, and rental leasing. And then um, with that uh, program, Brooke, uh, we have a PIP uh, loan match. That, so the PIP grant is a 75-25 split. So 75% can be covered by the grant. And then the applicant, the recipient, comes up with 25%. And we have a matching loan product for that. Yeah, I mean, uh, it is kind of a unique program that was created specific to uh, North Northeast, and uh, the, the idea is to support individuals who may not uh, have that 25000 to uh, to support that project. Uh, they can <laughs> borrow that 25000 as a match, so you have 100% of the project uh, covered through that loan plus uh, uh, the grant. Um, that particular program, again, it's, uh, uh, it's only available for uh, a PIP grant recipient and for those who want it. So it's not necessarily, not everybody would apply for that or would want to get that much, but if anybody wants it, it's available and, uh, 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 and it's uh, very flexible and a very, you know, we have... Um, our loan program and we have our process, uh, uh, we have made this, this particular program uh, purposefully a very streamlined and uh, minimal requirement. So it's a very uh, uh, smooth process uh, if anyone wants to access it. Okay, so then you'll see that um, it shows the dollar amount and the increase in uh, PIP grant awards and for, you know, for 467,000 approximately. Um, part of that goal is large-scale development, and there was one change, one applicant, and that is a, um, a African-American uh, woman, a longtime <coughs> property owner, with uh, approved up to 75,000. And then Brooke can talk about the loan. Um, 
So um, we have a, um, a large scale and property acquisition loan program and I uh, would emphasize at this point, uh, we are uh, relooking at, so uh, we're looking relooking our uh, program and we are actually going to be updating and relaunching that. So we expect, uh, um, you know, if there are any challenges, this is specific to uh, TIF or uh, loan programs that are overseen by this uh, committee, the dollars are overseen by this committee. We have other loan programs that we uh, uh, we provide, we fund, uh, but um, we have struggled to uh, get that uh, those programs uh, uh, successfully deploying, and that includes you know from the outreach and one of the uh, the thing we are uh, discussing and we do have uh, in partnership with uh, navigators uh, we are working on outreaching but we also look forward to see a partnership uh, with you guys to be able to uh, uh, to do that work more uh, successfully so we have uh, uh, we are supporting businesses in north northeast through our other loan programs that are uh, you know, whether it's uh, equipment purchase or, you know, for supporting the businesses, but these programs are specific to property redevelopment or tenant improvement, and those have been a little bit challenging to get the, uh, uh, the fund out, and we look forward to uh, getting your support and also uh, update from our end to uh, uh, continue to grow those programs. Great, okay, and then in... Uh Goal number two, this is um, for the specifically for tenant improvements and that's where the tenant is the applicant. And in that goal, in the six month period, we um, have approved, received and approved two grants and totaling uh, 175,000. And in that, the, uh, it's a split between 50% um, of that was Asian and 50% went to an African American. Um, those businesses were uh, food in the food industry and in an auto repair shop. So just uh, to loop back that the large scale, that one uh, development loan, the CPRA loan was for African-American um, uh, small scale development. Uh, it was mixed use uh, apartment and uh, commercial uh, building uh, uh, in, in North Northeast, and that was for 115000 Okay, then um, goal number three, Joanna or uh, the Housing Bureau will need to speak to goal number three, and Joanna can speak to goal number four. Wait, no, I'm goal number four. Mm -hmm. So, um, sorry about that. So, in goal number four, it's, uh, it shows that it hasn't changed. This is in the Community Livability Grant. So, we did just finish the Community, community Livability Grant process. It was open from September 10th to January 10th. There were for 14 applicants. The um, subcommittee, the Community Livability Subcommittee that was made up of with Gwen and Karis and Jennifer reviewed all 14 applications and recommended funding 11 of those applications. And I believe Karis updated that at the last meeting. Um, I am in the process of calling uh, the um, those who were awarded and those who weren't, and so I'm not able to actually make a public, we're not able to publicly announce who was awarded until we make all those phone calls. And so that should be happening here in the next uh, week, um, hopefully, and then at our next meeting, um, or prior, what we'll do is send out information of who was awarded before we make a public announcement. And it, so that would bring the total up from 24 to um, 35. And uh, would bring the total um, awarded above the $2.5 million, or just right at that. And on the, um, on the housing, so I got the numbers from housing. Yeah, we're going to. Sure. I was just going to continue on the report for this. I'm sorry. I, I think that would be an important item. Sure. Microphone, microphone, microphone. microphone. Yeah. Would you please share the conversation you and Karis had online related to the churches and CLG? I think that's important for everyone to know about. Thank you. Sure. We have two um, 
applicants that were um, church or churches or religious organizations and so on their application they described what the project was and what we need to do because of uh, religious organizations we have to ask them to provide us more detailed as far as what is the community benefit the broader community benefit um, and then so that they can be eligible for the grant the be, because the funds cannot go f specifically just exclusively to the religious organization it needs to have a broader um, broader purpose broader goal and so I've asked those two organizations to provide that information and they said that they would get that they'd be happy they were actually happy when we gave them the opportunity to uh, follow up and answer this question to provide more detail because what um, our online application has a limitation on the number of words that you can put in the um, in the form and then what happens is it doesn't give them enough space to be able to thoroughly describe what it is that they provide to the broader community mm -hmm. and so what we've done is we've given them a second opportunity to come back and say okay explain it to us so that we can have that back backup documentation to show that and they were both very appreciative that we did give them that opportunity instead of just um, saying you're not eligible so. I appreciate that as well and I also appreciate Karis's um, inquiry and your response related to changing the application so that for next year there will be sufficient space for that and also an alert mm -hmm. to yes. religious organizations that that's needed, right? Yes. Thank you. Maurice. So maybe next time we could also have, because I know at one point we had this same report but a little bit more detailed information, especially on... Um, um, items one and two, where it gave the location of the award, the business name of the award, and the owner. Um, and so, you know, and one of the reasons why I say that is when we were able to receive that before we kind of noticed that there was a few people that applied twice. That goes oh, okay. actually against mm -hmm. what. Right. So by getting that information, we could actually do our oversight in making sure that um, that's not happening. Absolutely, and that. Um, when that did happen, that was very Im important because we did recognize that, and we're very, very thorough about it. So I'm happy to provide that, and I can give um, what I can do is ask our GIS folks to map it out for you as well, and I'll also provide the information. I have it here on a printout, but it's not all that pretty to hand out. No, no worries, and thank you. Sure. Are we ready for second floor, Joanna? Okay, so on the go three, I got the numbers from housing and um, on supporting home ownership, there's a correction is actually nine mm -hmm. instead of eight. And on the expanded home repair program, they had 22 so far. Both of those numbers are not until December, but until February. So their report was uh, further out. Um, and on, so they had actually five new since the last report on the home ownership and two new ones for the repair program. The pro, uh, promote accessory dwelling units is the one that we just voted to get that 1.8 back. So we have to, it will be part of the, the goals discussion going forward, right, on how we want to program that. And on the cultural business hub, we have as um, in progress as we need to also get back to it. Hold on one second, Maurice. And I'd say on that report as well, we had a little bit more detail in the past, so mm -hmm. if we can get that as well. That would be great. What what details do you guys usually get? Um, so um, the income details was identified. The names were not, but we were able to see what size housing, whether it was a single mm -hmm. single individual family or whether it was a four family, um, what their, you know, whether it was 118% MFI or whether it was, you know, 90. And so that information was extremely helpful for mm -hmm. this committee, I believe. I'll double check on what they sent me. Um, if it's not, I believe it said the percentage of the AMI, but I'm not sure it had all the other details that you were saying. So... Yeah, so what it, what it gave is the percentage of the AMI, the ethnicity and gender, mm -hmm. and the family size. Okay, I think they did give me that. Okay. 
And I can, do, would you be okay if I send that by email to everyone? Oh, yeah, I think that would okay. be perfect. Awesome. Shanisha Gwen Quinton. Mike, Mike, Mike. Oh, sorry. That money has not, that has been given back from Portland Housing Bureau. We distribute that money back to you, right? Yeah, you guys voted to return it to Prosper to um, program. Okay, so that has not been identified with what that money, what's going to happen with that money, if it's going to be something that's community-based where the community can have access to it or just it's just kind of in limbo right now. That is part of the $32 million that you guys oversee. Okay, so that means we have to make a decision on how that money will be distributed. Well, we'll be, we'll have to get back, and that's what we were discussing at the beginning in getting the committees back and start discussing that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Gwen? I'm sorry, that just confused me. Wouldn't the 1.8 go back into the same goal that it came out of? I think initially that's the idea, yeah. But I mean, it's oversaw by you guys, and that's my understanding that that's what the committee wanted before, so. I, I appreciate that, and that you're just validating it, so you yes. want the committee to validate that. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> All right. Uh, when you guys are deciding on the going back to item number one, uh, when you guys are deciding on the small scale property improvements and the large scale development pro or property development, are you two the ones who are ultimately making that decision or do you guys have a committee of people who do that? Are you talking about whether we have Approve the grant application? Or, yeah, okay. So uh, first, the differentiation between large scale and small scale is 500,000. So and most of the, so that's why that small scale is much higher. And um, I don't decide who gets the application. We do have a review committee made up. It's me, um, it would be Joanna, um, at, as a temporary um, relationship manager for the interstate URA. Um, my, um, our program, uh, PM2, program two kind of. Project manager too. Pro yeah, oh, project Nagy. manager Amy Nagy. Mm -hmm. And um, then project staff, our admin, we all look at it and we look at the criteria, where it's at, um, what it is that there, is it a, a eligible expense and um, what the use is and does it meet the criteria that's set out, set out in the North Northeast uh, CDI plan. And then that's where the decision is made to move forward. Is there any community involvement outside of, of uh, Prosper Portland? The community involvement, <laughs> I believe that would be. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we have the Seoul District, who's our business navigator, who's bringing in and marketing the program. Um, as far as, like, the community of what we would ask everybody on the committee is to promote the program and um, and bring in uh, clients, uh, uh, grant applicants. Um, we do not have community members reviewing the applications, though. That's so, what you're asking. So that means they're the ones who are employed at Prosper Portland. Then. The what? Right. The people who are reviewing the applications to make the decision? Yes. Okay. Maurice. And I brought this up last time as well, last time we had this report. It would be great to actually see that, you know, we've given the grants out. I assume the money's being deployed or has been deployed. Just to have some of those businesses come in and be able to mm -hmm. explain to us oh. what they've done with it, how this project was successful for them, because we continue to just talk about numbers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think for this committee and for the retention of this committee, it would be great to see results that's a great idea yeah. and I will make sure that happens at the May meeting at least one person one business owner a property owner comes in and talks about the grant that they received and what they used it for so thank you Gwen thank you maybe one who's to? received a grant and another who's received a loan would be great mm -hmm. sounds good do we uh, I think we have uh, a few, especially maybe we can find someone, uh, one who received the PIP and the PIP matching loan, kind of, and actually we have uh, a client who received that plus additional, like a different loan from Pro Support Land. So uh, we can uh, explore uh, if, the, if we can get them to come or someone else. Um, I wanted to address uh, Quinton's question a little bit. So that's kind of the grant prog uh, process and 
the loan process is a little bit different for the uh, people matching loan. Uh, I would work with them uh, to review the application, the items they received, and I'm a loan officer also, an under, the underwriter in this case, and I write a memo and uh, uh, my immediate manager uh, approves that, so uh, she had the uh, approving authority on the PIP match loan. Um, anything beyond that, we have internal uh, uh, committee, it's, uh, it's called Financial Investment Committee. I work with the business owner, the applicant, I help them put together the application, and one, uh, I write a report and get it through the, our uh, internal investment committee, which uh, uh, basically, so there's a recommendation system. I uh, make a recommendation to get that loan approved, and uh, uh, our internal uh, financial investment committee uh, makes the final recommendation. But the uh, approval authority lies uh, on the executive director. So at the end of the day, the executive director approves those loans, but we review and make sure that we have done our due diligence before it gets to her. So my actual question, I was piggybacking his wonderful recommendation to um, bring some testimony in. I'm very interested in Lisa, maybe you will join the table if you feel needed. I'm looking at the numbers and as someone who appreciates numbers, it looks like four million has been dispersed out of 32 million. Which goal are you looking at? I'm looking at your funding line, total amount dispersed, so how much has actually been received by the committee, community versus the goal of $32 million, which is the total that was to be dispersed for a five-year period. So the alarm that this is setting off for me is that we're like, what, year three and a half? Mm -hmm. That is a fraction, and that does not represent success. So I would just love to hear all three of your opinions about that. Well, I can say like for our PIP program, we're obviously, um, we've awarded two point, you can see 2.4 million and that exceeds the two point, the goal for that particular yeah. Yeah. Um, line item and yeah, I just need to like, like, <laughs> like, like, I think this is what, it is something we just shared. Yeah, it's a, with it's our, more of a global question. Yeah, it is a global question, yeah. and it's okay. like, a, and, and you're right, and it's one of the things when I um, came up, it was not to say don't, um, to discourage any discussion around ODOT, and I really want this committee's focus to be, we have significant amounts of resources to get out. It's one of the reasons we've brought on board navigators out within the community so that we promote it. If you have thoughts about how should we be marketing and outreach kind of more on a, both through some of the, the community-based partners that we have as well as others, happy to hear it. I think the other thing that we shared with our board today as part of our presentation around the community development initiative, there's a couple of things. One, we are seeing like significant success within our grant programs and not within our loan programs. So Brooke touched on this and, and I'll just kind of reaffirm and restate it, which is one of the issues we, we just wrapped up repositioning all of our business loan products to identify how are they working, how are they not working, and particularly with an equity lens. So we actually took them to our, like, we have a council on, uh, on equity. And we took, to the, took the business loan products to them. The um, team member who works with Brooke, who is undertaking this process, is now looking at our redevelopment loan products to ask that same question of how are they working, how are they not working. They were set up as gap funding rather than primary funding. And very often when we're sitting with John or Fawn around the kind of projects that are coming forward, we really need to be the primary lender, not a gap lender. So how do we think about our products differently? And so Kay is starting to undertake that work, which is what Brooke touched on. And I think it's gonna be really important that this is a particular geography and area where we look at those new products first and foremost. Um, oh. Is there a timeline, even if it's not a hard and fast timeline? It, was this to happen in five years, and are, are we considering Oh, you year? mean in terms of, sorry, not the timeline for the new loan products. Right. Okay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's a good question. We want to make sure that we're setting out targets and that we're, we're striving our best to hit them. Um, in, and I also want to flag, I think it's actually interesting if you look at where we are relative to the clients served, you're, if you look at the money, because just because we, we have this conversation in Old Town too, 
in the Old Town Chinatown action plan, which is, it's actually curious to me, we're closer on the client serve to being right on target to where you would be three years into a process relative to the money. Like and, the money looks like 10%. But the money looks like 10%, and we have a similar thing happening in Old Town, in the Old Town Chinatown <coughs> action plan as well, which is we're seeing a lot of demand for our small grant products to help kind of smaller businesses go, and more challenges and it's in part because development takes, the other thing I would just say is I would not only focus on the amount dispersed because development is a long process. So, and I, I can, I, I know, and I'll come back to the five years. I just, I do want kind of like everybody, like for us to have a shared vocabulary of what it means to do development. So we have long-term property owners that we have been working with for five years who are just now ready and we don't want to rush them into making decisions about property or redevelopment because it's a major major decision to make and if it's funding construction which some of these are construction unto itself can take two years to occur so I want to be cognizant of kind of what the scale of the project is is going to inform does the money go out in a six month period or does it go out in a two year period on Old Town Chinatown, based on a conversation both with city council and our board, um, that action plan wrapped up. We amended it and actually updated it and said what's working, what's not working, what has changed in terms of the community need, and then we renewed our commitment with an amended action plan. Can I, I for one moment? Just hold yeah. for one second. Uh, if we look at our timeline, <laughs> we are now at 7.35. We still have another item. Uh, Co-chair. What say you? Do we continue in this conversation? Should we table it and move to the next item? I defer to your leadership. Uh, I would leave that up to the the um, the advisory board members. If anybody else has any questions, I don't mind continuing the conversation. Well, so then my next question to you, sir, is: Then are we going to table the next item and push it over until the? I I, I think we have to talk a little bit about it because it's, it's date sensitive in terms of that last item. So that might push us over in time. But again, I defer to you. Can I just say something really quick? I think the bottom line of this, it goes back to the subcommittees need to get together and we need to, to do this. I appreciate the response, Lisa. Mm -hmm. That was really thorough, actually. So I appreciate the depth that you went into. I just want to say that this, obviously, our committee wants to be successful. We have to be successful on both the numbers as well as the people that we touch. I think it's important to look at both sides. So thanks again. Thank you. All right. I would just like final thoughts. I think we have opportunity in a sense. Um, uh, the, the fact that we're not giving big dollar amount to certain groups, right? So like we're reaching more. Um, and there are two challenges I see. One is, you know, let's look at the loan programs and what we, you know, maybe what's missing and why. Uh, but the other, I think, even as we look to do that, we have programs available and we are willing and wanting to work with individuals. So the marketing piece, and uh, this goes back to uh, you all as well, and as everyone, our navigator, we need to continue to do that if there is a need. We do have a program that works. Maybe it has some kinks we need to uh, work out, but I think we can continue to do that. And I think I would challenge you all as well to continue to uh, get the word out as we all are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Janisha, uh, is it something you needed to say or can it? Okay. Microphone. Still very concerned about those who have the greatest need if they have the greatest access, if they have the ability to have access. And I don't oh. hear that yep. as much, but we'll have to get back to that. That's where the subcommittee work really can inform. Maurice? And, and now, uh, just echo that and one of the things I would say is as far as getting the word out because I remember on one of the grants for example it was a uh, 10 million dollar project and there's not a lot of African Americans out there that can build a 10 million dollar project but there's a lot of African Americans out there that can use ten thousand dollars so I think we really need to start to think rethink of how we're deploying these dollars and who we're trying to benefit Thank you very much. Okay, appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna. Um, this isn't a pretty report, but it shows who was mm -hmm. uh, is awarded the grant. So I'll pass. You guys can pass that around and see, so you can look and see it. It's not a um, double or anything. Wonderful. Let's move to item number five: urban plan announcement. Thank you. So you guys should have this um, one pager. 
all those front and back, about urban plan. Uh, we spoke a little bit about it at the last co-chairs meeting, uh, um, the debrief after the last meeting. Uh, yeah, after the last meeting, sorry. So urban plan is a project that we are looking to bring to, to the community, um, focusing on the CDI, the project working group, and the, the housing committee. It's a partnership between Prosper and the Urban Land Institute, and is a full day interactive project that the goal is to help everyone understand better how urban planning and development works and feel more empowered to participate and know the different ways that they can participate in, the, in that process. I think uh, the way one of my colleagues put it that I really like is just so community members don't feel like the changes are happening to them, but they feel like they can be part of the change as well. And how can they be? Can they do that? So the event is scheduled to happen on April seventeenth. Uh, it's a full day. Our priority is the CDI, the Project Working Group, and the Housing. We're also inviting partners like Miso and. Um, the Seoul District, as well as, as um, some of the managers for the Neighborhood Prosperity Network that we have. I wanted to first present here, but I have the, um, the invite already ready to send out. I'm hoping to send it out by Friday, but I just wanted you all to be informed and understand what it is before just getting something in and not, not knowing what that is. Questions, comments, thoughts? So the request and the hope is that this group will do what? We'll participate. <laughs> it's a full day um, breakfast and lunch will be served uh, it's very interactive you have contact with different um, members from the development and, and planning community we have people from very different backgrounds Jennifer is actually gonna be volunteering with our architecture background um, and we think it's gonna be a great opportunity and just fun any comments or questions All right, we are now at. No. Oh, yeah. Will an agenda is. be provided prior to the event? I'm sorry, say that. Will again. you guys be providing an agenda before the event just so we can see what the schedule looks like? Because it's a Friday. Yes. Um, so just it, with it people's is. work schedules, and maybe you can come for, you know, know what's going on. So it is, you have to be there full day. The way it works is you're going to be, the, the, the goal is to have between 25 and 30 uh, people attending. The, the attendees are going to be divided into groups of five or six, and each group is going to have a set, is like a special Lego set for planning, and they're going to plan this um, um, made-up city and go through the process. Each member has a position, so one can be a developer, one will be financing. Each one will have a different, a different title. And they're going to work together in developing that. And there is like a financial tool that is going to be already in the computer. And they just enter the numbers to see how the changes that they make and where they put what, how it affects the financials as well. And then they're going to present to a city council that is made of volunteers um, to get the feedback. The volunteers are also going to be presenting, present there, not just... Um, you know, they're not, they're not, the volunteers are not going to be there to tell people how to do it, but to ask questions to make people think about how they are developing in the whys. Um, so that's why it's very interactive, and whoever's participating needs to commit for the full day. Excellent. Thank you very much. We are at 7.43. We'll open it up to public comment. There's any. Yes, sir. Good evening again. As your navigator, you guys are more than welcome to talk to us about what we're experiencing out there. Okay? You, you, you got one face sheet of it, but we do have a different perspective. Not necessarily different, but we're working with them to, move, to smooth out some of these rough spots in the process. So, but most of that, we're running into a lot of process stuff. So just so that you know that, but I can circle back at any time to give you guys a report or whatever you need to get from me. Do you think it would be beneficial to just kind of make that part of a regular? I think that it would be, uh, yeah, or bi-monthly, something like that. But I think I should on the regular be able to give you guys a little bit about what we're experiencing out there as a navigator. Okay. 
That'd be helpful. Gwen? John, do you think an open house might be good? Like we could schedule something, we could have food, we could have multiple people come and visit. You know, I think we've started the foundation of this process and I think it's now starting to take take footing. Okay, so I think we should just continue to move forward in some of the navigating stuff that we're starting to see because now we're starting to get a full picture of the process from opening to close from the underwriters and all that kind of stuff. Hi, Fawn. Um, where'd you come from now? <laughs> the reason why I recommended an open house is I think it would be lovely for the committee to get to know you guys more. Sure, sure. That part of it's fine, but I mean, there is a lot of, a lot of work going on with the underwriter and ourselves in terms of moving people through the process and a lot of different dynamics and a lot of different uh, people and organizations that are coming. So yes, grants are being asked about, but the loan process is still, uh, you know, we're still working through some of the, the kinks in that process. Fawn. By the way, um, we are having a networking your name, your mixer your May 20. Your name. Oh, Fawn Aberson, and I'm with the Seoul District Business Asso Association, and I work with the Navigator. And we are doing a networking mixer on um, March 25th. You're all invited. It's at Remotely, which is a beautiful workspace. We kind of we workspace and something that the Russell Williams Project Working Group should really take a look at. Um, but I, I want to say that one of the biggest things that we thought of last year, what we wanted to do with the navigator process was first really understand the process ourselves. And we kind of fast tracked that. And towards the end of last year, we really p started pulling Brooke and Kay and some of those folks uh, who are doing some of that underwriting. It was like, we've got to see this process in action. We've got to like sit down some people and walk through it with it. And all these nuances came out, as they were saying. So we've been able to more refine our coaching and our mentorship out there and our outreach out there as a result of it. Uh, it's, it's just been very much more informing. And the momentum is building. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any comments? Others? Oh, what time? The mixer is... March 25th at 5.30 to 8 p.m. I would ask that you would send that out yeah. and do it in a calendar invite. That would be fantastic. Joanna? I just want to thank both the Seoul District as well as you guys. I think this is the synergy we were looking to get more of. And that's and I think this this was a great discussion in terms of just saying, yes, we need the subcommittees to kind of get together and, and so we can get those goals going. That's the really... I have a, just a quick question. Who are the navigators now? I mean, how many navigators do you have? We have four navigators as far as with us, but then you also have the other organization, MISO, that are doing what they do. I don't know if they got navigators, but we we have four navigators that's, that's with us. Okay, and so we're able to connect with you how? Any way you, you want to. You can stand up and yell Bubba outside. <laughs> I'll come see you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'll leave you with a card and a way to contact me, sis. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> Thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bubba. Uh, yeah, okay. When the uh, subcommittees get together and talk about the goals and do the different things like that, what is that meeting going to look like? I don't think you can answer that, but. No, well, no she can. No. So that was part of our discussion, the last co-chairs meeting that we had, is having that meeting to discuss how we want to see that. And I just need to hear back from you guys with, a date, with dates that you were available. I think it varies case. Microphone. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, microphone. It, I think it also, the process varies per goal, because certain, certain things like the CLG application review, it's very, it's very easily structured. Other things are less defined, like the cultural business hub, which I will send you an email invite for <laughs> the next time we meet. And that's, we're kind of defining the process. And so that's why, you know, uh, it's not, it's loosely defined, a little more nebulous. I still think there's a disconnect between Posture Portland and what's going on in the community. And I just think there needs to be more definition. Can that happen? What do you Maybe mean? does not know exactly, because Prosper Portland is kind of a new definition of who you are. Mm -hmm. And the community is not aware of the type of resources that, that are available. 
So I would say that's why we work with navigators and um, with the Soul District with me. So for them to help us as well as that's what this committee is for, is to help us put that out there. I think one of the things that I'd like to support you guys in is, is with, uh, with Carol or the new person that came in and begin to help her to navigate and assist her, Mike, with being having those introductions, you know, meeting people and getting a sense of what really is going on in, in Oregon and, and in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would like to just make sure that I'd be a little bit more of your advocate or your, your navigator for her also and assist her in getting up to speed really quickly on some things. So uh, if you guys give me the consent to go ahead and do that, I'll, I'll support Carol <laughs> in doing that. Nancy. Okay. Nancy. 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 Okay. Yeah. Nancy Wilson. Nancy Wilson, yeah, that's a heck of a name. Like, uh, yeah, was there a singer or something? That, there was. Uh, Miss Phillips, I know you would know. <laughs> Nancy Wilson. Wilson, Possibly. yeah. All right, thanks everybody. Right, We've thank come you. to the end of our meeting. Appreciate your time and your energy and your effort. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.